Hey you guys, it's Britt. Today we're here to talk about a TikToker who is currently being sued for something that is actually really serious. And I immediately kind of thought of Katie Joy and Without a Crystal Ball, as y'all know, I covered her lawsuit with the YouTuber Glam Life Guru or Tati Westbrook. And this is just wild. Like it, it's, it's such a stark reminder of the things that you say online really matter. So I wanted to share this with you guys. If you're interested, please keep watching. All right, you guys. So today we're going to be talking about the TikToker named Ashley Gouliard, I think is how you pronounce it. I apologize if I'm not pronouncing that correctly, but her name is Ashley, so I will be referring to her as Ashley. And essentially, this news broke yesterday morning, and it was going all over TikTok. And essentially, what this um, what this TikToker has done is blamed a University of Idaho teacher with being guilty of murder. And this is really wild. So um, as you guys know, I have not made a dedicated video about the Idaho 4 or the, you know, there's, there's a few different things that this case is being called, but I see the Idaho 4 all over the place. So um, I'm sure that most of y'all know what I'm talking about, but it's an absolutely devastating story. And despite the fact that I'm not covering it, I have mentioned previously this regarding misinformation and rumors when it comes to true crime. Misinformation, rumors, and outright lies spread so quickly when it comes to true crime, and that's why a lot of people don't like when people online make true crime content or they talk about things that are really devastating. Because when you're lacing something that is that devastating in with sensational headlines or things that are clickbait or conspiracies, it's not only harmful to the active investigation because most of the time these are open investigations. A lot of uh, true crime people online are talking about active investigations, not necessarily ones that have already gone through the um, criminal justice system. And so it's not only damaging to that, but it's also very painful for the family to constantly come across this content that is talking about their daughter, their son, their brother, their mom, their dad, their, you know, best friend, their acquaintance, their colleague. It's very painful for these people to constantly come across these headlines and they know that it's misinformation, but what are they going to do? They're trying to grieve the loss of a loved one are they going to sit there and leave comments? No, they're, they're, they're in their, um, they're, they're grieving. Like they're, they're not going to sit there and try to correct some, you know, group of online sleuths. And even though I do feel like sometimes the information can be helpful that is uncovered through these sleuths, but what I see all the time is instead of turning it over to the authorities, they decide to make a video about it and then after the fact, they might turn it over to the authorities or if they're called out on it, then they will decide to do that. Um, everything is for people's financial gain. Everything online is usually either for attention or money. People that are trying to mourn the loss of someone whom they really, really cared about, those, those people should not have to worry about lies being spread about their loved one or their friend on some random TikTok account. So I am going to cite this article and it was released on NBC News. I will link it down below if y'all are interested, but essentially it starts out by saying a University of Idaho professor who says she's been wrongly accused of ordering, ordering the unsolved killings of four college students last month is alleging defamation in a federal lawsuit filed this week against the self-described internet sleuth who posted the accusations on TikTok. This is the teacher who potentially had the four Idaho students killed. She's the one who ordered the execution. As you can see from here, she may have been a part of LGBTQ community and she may have dated Kaylee or wanted to. The suit filed Wednesday in Idaho District Court 
<clears throat> by History Department Chair Rebecca Schofield, accused TikTok user Ashley Gilliard of falsely claiming that the professor had planned the killings with another University of Idaho student. And I will um, insert the videos that Ashley made in between me sharing this with you guys, just so you have a little bit of extra context. It continues by saying the videos began appearing on the platform November 24th and have been viewed by millions of people, according to the suit, which says Gilliard claims to solve high profile murders using tarot cards and by performing other readings. Your reading is starting off by saying you need moderation and balance in your life. So if you've been overburdened with tasks or responsibilities or whatever it is that something you've been working on, whatever it is that has you overburdened, you may need to exercise balance or give and take. So don't be the person doing all the work. Don't be the person doing all the giving. The lawsuit appears to be the latest example of what experts call dangerous speculation surrounding the quadruple homicide in Moscow, Idaho, Idaho on November 13th. Authorities haven't identified any suspects in the killings of, and it lists the victims, um, Kaylee, Madison, Zana, and Ethan, nor have, nor have they found a um, M weapon, which police, which police have said they believe to be a double-edged weapon. The Moscow, Idaho Police Department previously called out what it described as misinformation, stoking community fears, and spreading false facts in the case. The department includes a, quote, rumor control section on its website found under the FAQ about the case. The department did not immediately respond for a request for comment on the lawsuit. Now, I did go over to this uh, TikTok creator Ashley's page because not only did I want to kind of see what she was all about, but I also wanted to read some of her comments because you can be a consumer of true crime, but most people, and I've said this before, most people that really appreciate the aspect of true crime and how these cases are solved and all of the, you know, manpower and energy that goes into catching the correct person, most people look at things like what she was doing and just shake their head. I did find a few comments even back from November where people were saying, you're going to be sued. You can't just come on your channel and say that this is what happened. You have no proof and you're not using words like, this is just a speculation. This is my opinion. This is alleged. She was not using those types of words when sharing these things she tried to pass off as fact. Just imagine being this professor who is not only blamed by this TikTok creator, but all of the other people who watched her video and actually believed what this girl Ashley was saying. These are when things can get really out of control. And that's why I always say creators are so they are so responsible for the things that they say and do. You cannot just come on your channel, say something that is going to upset people and throw up your hands when these people are, you know, sending her nasty emails and blaming her for things that she had nothing to do with. Rumors, when it comes to discussing true crime, do not coexist. They should not cohabitate. And I think that it's absolutely reckless that this content can even be put out. And it gives true crime a really bad name, in my opinion. As the rumor mill continues to strengthen with situations like this, it does absolutely nothing to make true crime a reputable genre on social media. It makes the public look at pages like this as money hungry, clickbait, greedy little people who will just run around and say anything. And I don't believe in crowd, um, crowdsourcing a conversation. I don't believe in that. I never have. I didn't like it with Gabby Petito. I didn't like it with this. I don't like it with anything. Because when you're allowing your uh, followers to just randomly come up with theories based on one thing that they saw and you're allowing it to be shared on your platforms or, you know, be echoed throughout the internet, you are accountable for that. You should not be 
harvesting a community that is throwing out speculations about somebody that lost their life and the family is a living trying to grieve a family member or a friend who literally was here one minute and gone the next. That's not okay. True crime is, um, I'd, I'd like to somehow like think of some way to get a handle on it, but I just don't know what that is. But I do think that giving people like this less attention, I know the lawsuit, yes, I'm talking about it now, but you know, I, I would never give this person an ounce of my attention if it wasn't for this coming out. Because as I said, I respect true crime and the people that work in this community to actually find answers and, you know, uh, solve cold cases and bring a little bit of closure to the families. I respect that. So when I see someone like this who is sitting there like throwing out these tarot cards and just coming up with a bunch of random speculations and then blaming someone with no real proof, with no real evidence, and knowing that they're content has a huge impact on the people that take it in. That is just all bad. So do I think it's fair that she's getting sued? I do, because there were so many people in her TikToks early on that were saying, you shouldn't do this. You have to use certain words. If you're going to, you know, share theories, you can't share them as fact. You have to be able to back things up if you're going to try to put them off as fact. Um, so she was warned. And she was warned again and she continued for uh, uh, basically a month sharing conspiracies, nonsense, and toxicity on her channel. And now she wants to act like she's completely unbothered because she is being sued. Listen, being sued is no laughing matter. Anyway, I need to get back to the meat and potatoes, which is what happened that night and things like that instead of talking about this lawsuit with Rebecca because... I'll let that play out in court and end the news media. Having a lawsuit knock on your door is not something that most people um, laugh in the face of. Some people might put on a good show and act like they don't really care, but attorneys are expensive. And if you're like this girl where it's very clear that you're in the wrong, that's not anything that I would ever scoff and laugh at. It's not funny. It's expensive. It's time consuming. It's extremely stressful. And if you would have handled your content with a little bit of uh, precaution and some integrity for damn sure, you would not be sitting in the boat that you're sitting in today. So I do not feel bad for her. And this really reminded me a lot of Katie Joy without a crystal ball these creators are gonna have to stop jumping up on their platforms and just sharing nonsense because people are taking note and one day you're gonna fuck around with the wrong person and they're gonna have the money to actually come after you they're gonna have the time and the resources and the um energy to actually want to shut you down and if there is evidence to actually prove defamation which i know is very hard to do in the states but you never know with this, I would say being falsely accused of being a murderer is just about as bad as you can get. And it's unfair to the victim's families. It does nothing to help the investigation. It does nothing but, uh, you know, gave her five minutes of fame. And I don't understand how anyone could risk five minutes of fame for their integrity and more importantly, the mental health of the person and the feelings of the person that you are falsely accusing of a crime. So either way, these are gonna be my thoughts for now about this. Did you hear about this lawsuit? I'm sure most of y'all have heard about this case, but it's devastating. And this lawsuit is, um, I'm not surprised that it came out once I saw her content, not surprised, but I can't wait to hear from you guys. So for now, if you like the video, please leave a like and a comment. And if you'd like to see more from me in the future, please subscribe. I'll see you guys soon. Bye.